so today I'm going to be doing the book courtship tag. I was not tagged to do this, but I have yet to be tagged to do something. Now, just a quick side note. My new bookshelf is a bit higher on my wall than expected. I do have another actual shelf that we were going to put up so it was four and then that way it would be like right behind me and I wouldn't, wouldn't be all the way up there. But my new shelf is so big that all my books don't fit on it. Like there's a lot of room. So I don't want to put the next bookshelf up and just have a blank shelf. That's, that's not going to look good. So I'm keeping that shelf until I run out of room and I can go back down onto it. So until then, let's just deal with me trying my best. This also is not the final organization of this shelf. I just kind of throw all my stuff up there because it's brand new. These are my TBR books, so it's not a very pretty sight because I kind of just threw them there. Definitely going to reorganize and then bookshelf tour. Everyone loves bookshelf tour. So in the words of Shakespeare, without further ado, let's get on with the tag. Phase one, initial attraction. A book that was brought to you because of the cover. For this, I have Half Bad by Sally Green. I'm not really one to go to a book because of the cover. Honestly, I'll go to a book if I recognize it, if it's something someone told me they liked, or I heard about it and it sounded interesting because I don't have a lot of money to waste on a book I'm not going to like. <laughs> what happened with this was I saw it and I couldn't figure out what it said because it is in kind of a weird print area and I was on like... A different aisle and I was kind of walking by and I saw it. So I went over to see what it said and for some reason I thought it said bad half and I was like bad half? Bad half? Someone has a bad half? What? That's, that sounds really cool. And then I was like no, no. This is English. We read love to write. It's half bad. But because of that it brought me to the cover because I wanted to see what it said. So good job Sally Green. Good marketing tool and a great book. Phase 2, First Impressions, a book you got because of the summary. For this, I have The Testing by Joelle Chapanumadwidwidu. Sorry. <laughs> I thought this sounded a lot like The Hunger Games, and I got it a few years ago. I got it when I was 13, 14. It was a while ago I got it. I remember just really missing The Hunger Games and missing that whole essence, and I read this, and it was about this big testing. So I was like, oh, that sounds like The Hunger Games. So I got it. But yes, I got it as just a fun little read, but I got it because of the summary. Phase 3, Sweet Talk, a book with great writing. For this, I narrowed it down to two, but I just have so many favorite books with such amazing writing that it was quite miraculous I got it down to two. First, I have one of my favorite books in the entire world, The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. The writing in this is something I have never seen before. It got very confusing at times because it was so in-depth and it was all metaphors but it was so brilliant and it was... <sighs> it still gives me chills. I'll go back and I'll reread something that I read ten times and I'll get chills and I'll feel a different feeling and I'll notice something different about it and it's just so amazingly, amazingly written. It's just... it's unbelievable. Next I have Illuminae by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. I promised myself that I wouldn't talk about this until it came out which is October 20th but I couldn't help it. I just ha it's so great. The entire book is written in hacked confidential files like there's nothing in this that's written like a regular book. It's all just hacked files so it's such a different and interesting read but it's written so well and it's put together so well that it's like reading a regular book. But a great one. Phase 4, First Date. A first book that made you want to pick up the rest of the series. So for this one, I again have two books. I couldn't narrow it down between the two of them, which one made me want to read the next one more because I read both of them a while ago, so I can't remember. But, you know, that's how I do tags, okay? My, my video. Let me do what I want. First, I have my favorite book in the whole world. If you know me, you know what it is. Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Mass. I was not even halfway through it when I made the charge to Barnes & Noble and I picked up Crown of Midnight because it. I knew, I knew I would like it. The first book was so great. The second book was so great. Third book was so great. The prequel books. Novels, not novella, was so great. Next, I have The Unbecoming of Mara Dyer by Michelle Hodkin. Since this whole book is kind of like a mystery, what's gonna happen next kind of thing, or like what's going on here kind of thing, the mystery's not solved by the first book, and I just remember being so glad that I had accidentally 
picked up the second book instead of the first book first. Like, I had accidentally gotten the second book, and then I went back and got the first book. I remember finishing it and just being so happy that I had the second book. Phase 5, Late Night Phone Calls, a book that kept you up all night. For that, I have I'll Give You the Sun by Jandy Nelson, which is top 5 favorite books for me. I know I say I have a lot of favorite books, but I really don't. I have 5 favorite books. 3 favorite books. It's probably in the top 5. I finished reading this around 2 or 3 a.m. My eyes were drooping and I couldn't really see because I was crying and I couldn't stop reading it and I finished it and I was wide awake and I wanted to read more but there wasn't any more because it was done. I think the books you finish in the middle of the night are the best kind of books because that's when your imagination is like going crazy so that's when you get the most emotion. If I ever write a book I'm gonna make it like on the front cover. Only read this at night so you get the best experience. Phase 6, Always On My Mind, a book you couldn't stop thinking about. Now again this had a lot for me. I just, when I read a book I just can't stop thinking about it for a long time if it's super good. The Hunger Games is probably my number one because I was just kind of in this like state of despair for like two months after it. I couldn't read anything. I couldn't think about anything other than it. I try not to put The Hunger Games in all my videos or any of my videos. So I picked two others. Yes, two books. Isn't it? Isn't it crazy? I picked two books for a question. Now, this first one might actually be a surprise, but it's Lord of the Flies by William Golding. I didn't necessarily like the overall writing in this book. I thought it was just very hard to follow. But the actual story was very interesting, and it was very depressing for me. And I remember just sitting in English class, like, not being able to focus, because I was just thinking about what happened, and I kept thinking about the boys, and I kept thinking about their, what their life would be afterwards. I can think about what they were like before this happened and I just couldn't stop thinking about it. It just made me so sad and it just, it depressed me so much. I was just in a constant funk for like a week. Next I have The Host by Stephanie Meyer, which if you still haven't read, I 10 out of 10 recommend that you read because it is such a good book. Like, I never read Twilight, but I don't know if it was good or not, <laughs> but this, this baby, this is good. Still, still waiting that sequel, Stephanie. You know, just uh, still waiting. Well, I'll wait. I'll keep waiting, but not patiently. I finished this, and it is like seven, six hundred something pages, and I wanted more. I was so upset that I didn't have more because it left with so much more that could be done, and I couldn't stop thinking about it. I finally got into a point. I read this in seventh grade. Let's just get that out of the way. Seventh grade, I read this, and I still think about it. Then the movie came out, and a lot of people didn't like the movie. I actually enjoyed it. I don't remember if it was very close to the book. It was a while ago, but I, I, I remember liking it. My favorite band in the world, Imagine Dragons, I can't listen to Radioactive without thinking about this book and then just crying. Not crying. I used to cry. Don't cry anymore. I'm pretty tough now. Oh, the door's locked. My sister's not gonna be able to get in. Let's see if she can use the key while I'm waiting for my laptop to put up. She knocked on the door. No, go get the key! Go get the key! I have the key! <laughs> I love filming by my window. Phase 7, always physical, a book that you love for the way it feels. I have Me and Earl and the Dying Girl by Jesse Andrews. I don't have the original copy, and I know there's another copy too. I probably bought a copy. I wanted the original one, but I saw this in Barnes & Noble. It was the only one they had. It's so nice. Not only is it, I love the, I just love the cover, first of all, I love the way it looks, I don't know why, but it's floppy, and just, it, it's not, I don't know, it's like matte, but it's weird, it's not, it's like it has little ridges or something, I don't know what it is, but I love it, anyone who owns this copy knows what I'm talking about, it just feels so good. Phase 8, Meeting the Family, a book you recommend to your friends and parents, or whatever it was, so, it was something like that. Once again, I have The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. I recommended this to my grandmother and my mom and they both like went right through it in a week and it's a pretty big book. They both loved it and actually funny quick story I uh, lent this, not this copy, my older original copy, to my grandmother when she was going on vacation in at the beach or whatever and I just had a paperback whatever and she came back and I was like well can I have my book back? And she goes oh I lent it to my friend do you understand the basic rules of lending a book to someone? When her friend gave it back, it was bent, a page was ripped, there was sand in it, there was dirt in it, there were fingerprints in it. 
I wish I still had it just so I could show you. And I said to my grandmother, I was like, um, my book is it. So then she <laughs> she felt really bad, and then she was super super nice, and she took me to Barnes and Noble to get a new copy, and I kind of really milked it. So I got the exclusive collector's edition. Phase 9, Thinking About the Future, a book you will reread many times in the future. I honestly don't really know about this one. I've reread the Hunger Games series so many times, like too many times. I've reread a bunch of Harry Potter books and a bunch of Percy Jackson books, just my favorite ones. Usually the earlier ones, when I'm in a book slump, I reread those. I've re reread To Kill a Mockingbird. Twice. I don't, I don't think I can reread Throne of Glass because Selena was just, she was such a young yin. I've reread my favorite Sherlock Holmes stories many times as well. So I don't really know. It's kind of whatever, whatever, whatever. Probably The Hunger Games. I'll probably end up reading that to my grandchildren. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'll read them. <laughs> Phase 10. Share the love. Who do you tag to do this tag? I don't know if this tag is old or not, but I've seen like a lot of, so I hope I'm not like being weird doing it now. I tag Rachel Hannah and Lizzie Loves Books because they seem nice, so I hope they won't make fun of me, so. <laughs> I'm just, what? Thank you for watching, and I have many videos planned in the future. I hope you can't see them, but they're actually written on my wall, like right behind me. Thank you for watching. Bye!